Good morning, everybody. This is Tushar. Thank you for joining us today. I can see there's a full house. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. Before I get started, I wanted to introduce Kinsey Eden, who is our product solutions manager and will be uh, part of the webinar today. Kinsey has been with HelpShift for the past four years, and she works very closely with our enterprise customers like uh, Comcast Xfinity, Activision, very recently Square, so I'm super excited to have you here with me, Kinsey. Thanks, Tushar. And let me quickly introduce Tushar. Um, Tushar has been with the company for six years. He's one of the co-founders here. Um, he's also an engineer turned salesman. Uh, he now heads up um, the sales team as the VP of Revenue. Okay. Thanks, Kinsey. So uh, let's get started. So why are we here today? Uh, we are going to introduce our new platform, uh, Sense AI. This is HelpShift's turnkey, out-of-the-box platform capability that is now available and live to all of our customers. Um, and we have this line there which says, reimagining customer service for the B2C world. Um, before I get started, I, I quickly wanted to, Kinsey told you that I've been, I have been here six years, so I'm the old man of HelpShift with all the stories. So I remember back in 2012, when we were starting our company, and uh, we raised our seed funding round in June of 2012. Right around that time, Zendesk had raised a big round at a $600 million valuation. Salesforce was going strong. They had just bought Desk.com. So we asked ourselves that, why are we starting this company? Like, what is the big problem that we wanted to solve? And something that really stuck to all the founding team members at that time was, and our investors, is that brands continue to spend trillions of dollars on customer service, and still it remains to be the most frustrating part of the business. The customers are not very happy, and also the agents are not very happy. And it all shows off in the customer satisfaction score. And if you go on Twitter, if you just do a Google search on bad customer service, you will, in the first five or six pages, you will see every major brand mentioned on a bad experience that they have rendered to their customers. So this is a big enough problem to solve, and there's a lot of money being spent on it and yet we've not been able to find a very good solution. So that was enough motivation for all of us to get going and say, okay, there is a big opportunity that we need to disrupt and we need to create a solution for it. Um, so what did we do? Um, it, I want you to look at this. Uh, this is the cover of the Forbes magazine from 2007. The same year, in September, when Steve Jobs got on stage and launched the Apple iPhone, just a few months prior to that, the headline read, Nokia, one billion customers, can anyone catch the cell phone king? Let's take a minute to think about this. And, you know, I think it is, it is so incredible to see that what changed. Uh, this phone that this fine gentleman is holding is now available in the museums as a relic to, for us to go and see. And it, in, in just the last 10 years, the entire communication industry had changed because of the iPhone. Uh, and yet, early in 2007, there was this Forbes cover which said that Nokia cannot be caught and Nokia is the runaway leader in all things mobile. Um, so, when we decided that we wanted to do a change in the industry, we saw mobile is going to help us design the next generation of customer service. At the very beginning, I was talking about reimagining customer service for the B2C world. It was all going to be possible because of the mobile phone. So HelpShip was born as the mobile customer service platform, and we embraced messaging as the dominant channel for all communications. We said phone calls are very, very expensive. For, you know, it, when I talked about the trillion dollars that are being spent on customer service, a lot of that trillion, trillion, 
a lot of a, lot, a big percentage of that spend is actually butts and seats and setting up call centers and setting up all the telephony that is required to fund those call centers. So phone continues to be an expensive and still not very high CSAT driven customer service medium. And then we had email, which is very, very cheap, but completely disjoint and also not something that is helping brands actually make customer relationships. But when you look at the mobile phone and how we are communicating today, we are always on. The mobile phone allows us to connect with the brand where we want to. Customer service in the last decade has changed. First, it was the brand that was deciding that, okay, I'm going to be available on a phone channel. I'm going to be available on a website. I'm going to be offering email support. But now because of mobile, the consumers demand where they want support and the brands have to deliver. If they are not able to deliver, then they should be ready to lose their customers. And this is a very important distinction in the new era of customer service versus what we have seen in the past. So here is what the big idea is. Customers expect experiences that are instant, that are personalized, and that are frictionless. And that is the most important thing that HelpShift is going to deliver, and we are going to talk about that as we move forward in this webinar. Um, and why? <laughs> so I have started with these bold, provocative statements. So, in the, And I can see in everybody who's joined today, some of, our, some of us are existing HelpShift customers, but a lot of them are actually new folks, new prospects who might be evaluating HelpShift. So I wanted to give you a quick sense of what we've been doing in the last five to six years. So we work with 500 plus brands and we have, we've raised $40 million from the largest investors in the Valley here in Silicon Valley. And uh, very lucky to work with brands like Honeywell, Square, uh, Comcast, Microsoft. Um, if you guys have not purchased the $7.99 or $9.99 movie pass, you should do it. Uh, great customers and they'll be very happy for your business. Uh, and most importantly, we are powering today 130 million conversations per month across all the 500 plus brands that we are working with. And that just shows that given a messaging interface, given a mobile experience, customers are really, really adopting and embracing this channel for actually connecting with brands and communicating with brands. So now we get started, right? Because this is about Help Shift and our AI platform. After we launched the company in 2012, uh, it took us some time to understand what we are disrupting and how we want to disrupt it. And most importantly, we said, in 2014, when we visited call centers, so the founding team of HelpShift is from India, and you know that India has a lot of call centers and BPO, as they call, call them. And we visited some BPOs. Actually, uh, we visited the Dell BPO in New Delhi, and this is the scene that we see. Lines and lines or rows and rows of people crammed into small cubicles with a script, multiple screens, and phone lines, and they are cramming through literally thousands of calls a day. And when we look at this situation, it is not good for the consumer, it is not great for the brand, and most importantly, it is not great for that agent who is running an eight-hour graveyard shift trying to answer calls for Dell. In 2020, and we are pacing towards that reality, is that humans are going to be replaced by machines, or I would like to say that humans are going to be augmented and enhanced and facilitated by machines to deliver the most enhanced, personalized customer service. Because the number one metric, that whether it's 2014 or it's gonna be 2020, that we all measure for customer service is going to be CSAT. Uh, and I think that's where we see the reality going forward, that what you see on the left-hand side is a sea of people, what you see on the right-hand side is intelligent machines facilitating, enhancing the customer experience. And that enhanced level of service 
is now going to be delivered through bots. Bots are already a reality. Let, let, me, sh let me just share this stat with you that China Airlines sells more airline tickets on their WeChat channel through a bot than they do through their website or any other physical location. So that change has already begun. Bots interacting with the customers at their time and giving them a workflow that allows them to sell service, that allows them to go and buy a ticket at their own time is already live. And you can see this is another bot which we, we have a screenshot of where the customer just decides to say, hey, this is what I want to do. See, this is the conversational way. This, this is not filling out a form. This is not writing a long email. This is not going through an IVR and selecting one for tickets, two for booking, three for reservations. No, you communicate with the bot in the most natural way and say, hey, I want to go to London from Dubai. What do I do? How do you want to get there, right? The, the, this is the options that you do. The, do you want to go direct? Do you want to fast? Like, what's your budget? And then using that conversational medium, you connect with and find the ticket and you go through that entire workflow in real time. Um, so why we brought this on is that step number one, mobile, because it is always with you. Step number two, conversational, because that's how humans communicate. Step number three, intelligent because it a machine can interpret who you are what you want and what you want to get accomplished much much faster than a human and step number four is a bot which is nothing else but a workflow because AI and machine learning were able to capture your intent and then commission a bot to deliver and complete that intent into what you really wanted to accomplish so I did say something where at the very beginning and I said machines are going to replace humans. And then there are everybody in this room who's sitting next to me, some are, some are managing our content, some are tweeting, some are writing down the questions that you're submitting, really looked at me and said, Tushar, we didn't discuss this, right? So then I connected myself and said, we, how machines are going to augment humans. And to be honest, I don't believe that machines can replace humans because for machines to be successful, they have to be trained by humans. So I think what is going to happen is that we are going to elevate the status of humans to become superhumans who are now solving complex problems and actually building relationships with customers. You know that this industry is called CRM, Customer Relationship Management. But for the longest time, it's actually become customer record management. We've built ticketing platforms. We've built CRM platforms, which are just storing data about customers. It has nothing to do with relationships because we as humans have relegated ourselves to data entry jobs. And it is not our fault as humans. It is the fault of the software that the legacy software that has been inadequate in actually facilitating building of relationships. The future is now and it is ready to make that change and say, no, humans, you have not just IQ, but EQ and you have the power to connect with your customers. So you should be responsible for building relationships while machines are going to do the rote and routine and mundane tasks and replace all those workflows. So this slide and this picture is saying how humans are going to become the people who train the machines so that they learn how to do the repetitive tasks and then humans can move away. And what does that happen? Your agent, your customer service agent becomes super agents and they are responsible for two most important things that actually affect your bottom line, that actually bring your CSAT higher, which is solve the complex problems that could not have been solved by a knowledge article, if someone, if your customer comes on your website and says, hey, I, where is my order? A bot can quickly answer that. They will ask you your order number and they will go and query a backend and say, here, this is the current status of your order. A, a human is not needed there. But if there was something like, hey, 
I'm on your side. I'm getting married in 10 days. I haven't picked out my dress or my suit. Can you help me out? That's where a relationship can be said. You don't need a bot there. There you need a real human to connect with you and solve your problem. And, and that engagement with a human would actually convert a customer to a loyal customer who continues to come to your website because they would have, your agent would have left a lasting impression and say, the brands care about you, a customer, and we helped you at the right time. Uh, so that's where we see humans being elevated to super agents while machines are doing all the mundane routine tasks. So coming to the most important part of this uh, webinar where we are going to introduce our Sensei platform and actually also show you a few demos because one thing that we have heard about AI, like let's debunk some myths. Oh, I need a data scientist. If I need AI, I need a team who is going to massage my data, train some models. It is going to do, take six months of the time. No. Our philosophy at HelpShift is that if you are building a solution, build a turnkey solution that allows your customer to go live within a seven to 10 day period, but allows the customer to then also personalize the AI to fit their exact workflows. So we're going to talk a bit about that. And then the second thing about bots is that when we think about bots, we don't think about bots as a bolt-on technology. We think about bots as something that is integral part of the workflow. Because if the bots are not integral part of the workflow, then you will not get the maximum benefit. Think about all the bot technologies that are live today. What's happening is that a customer is ushered into a bot interface, then they get frustrated with the bot, and then it gets hand off to an agent. It is very similar on what we did on the IVR, where we quickly, when we got a menu of press one for this, press two for this, we started pressing zero so that we could have talked, we, we started talking to a customer service agent immediately, right? And that's exactly what's happening in the bot world today because they are not integral part of the workflow. The way we are designing bots, and now Kinsey is gonna show you that, is that it is not bolt on. We can seamlessly take a conversation from customer to a bot to an agent, from agent to a bot back to the customer, because what we want to maximize for is CSAT. And we want to reduce the wait time so that the customer is never waiting for a response. If the agents are busy, you will never have enough agents if you're a growth company and you have millions of customers. And the other frustrating part is that the agents are not waiting on the customer, they hand it off to a bot, so the bot is waiting on the customer for more information. And this allows us to bring the maximum efficiency, and this allows us to boost CSAT. So I'm not gonna waste any more time with my stories. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring in Kinsey to show you and explain and demo Sense AI. Kinsey, over to you. Thank you, Tushar. Okay, so before I get into the demo, I want to quickly go over really what the Sense AI platform is and what it houses. Um, so HelpShift Sense AI is our AI platform, and under it, there are a few different components. The first component that I'm going to go over is called Predict. Uh, Predict can automatically classify incoming issues. Our bots platform also lives under Sense AI, and I'll go into detail about our different bots. And then lastly is Insights. Um, so Predict and Bots are live today. Insights is going to be live later this year. Um, what Insights is, think of it as um, finding a needle in the haystack kind of problem. It's going to find trends in your data and really see what's going on in your dashboard in that moment in time. So first, since AI Predict. So Predict is an issue classification machine learning engine. So what PREDICT can do, it can eliminate the overhead associated with manual triage or even keyword-based automation. So really, how does PREDICT work? What's the science behind it? What we have, to, in order to build a PREDICT uh, model in HelpShift, and any admin can do it, there's no data scientist required. Um, how it works is you, the admin, can feed HelpShift um, what we call the algorithms, or examples. So for example, you will feed help shift um, maybe 500, 1,000 issues that have to do with billing. So you'll say, okay, all of these issues are associated with billing. Here's a label, billing. 
Um, and then you'll feed that into HelpShift. We build the algorithms and we learn off of that. And then now every time an issue comes into the dashboard that meets those algorithms or hits those rules, we will append a tag to it or a label. And then with that label, we can route it to the right group of agents that are on the billing team. We can engage a bot that is a billing bot. We can um, maybe send a specific auto response or just automate an entire workflow from end to end. So predict is really what it is doing. It's eliminating that cognitive overload that you give to your end user by allowing them to message their problem in a UI that they're accustomed to. So all the customer has to do is say, hey, I'm having a problem with X, Y, and Z. And then on the back end, we're doing all the heavy lifting of associating what kind of issue it is. And I'll show this in a minute here. All right, so our bots. So these are the, our, all of the help shift bots that we have today. So here you can see we have the starter bots. We have issue selection bot that allows the customer to um, say what kind of issue they're having. Um, but in a modern messaging conversational UI rather than having to fill out a form. Then we have identity bot that can ask the customer who they are. CSAT bot um, is a star rating bot that you can see how they enjoyed their customer service. Then we have answer bot, which I'm going to show here in a minute. Answer bot um, uses NLP to show relevant articles um, to the customer in that same UI. And then lastly, we have custom, custom bots. Now custom bots are going to be used for any repetitive tasks that your agents are doing that you would like to automate. So what we're trying to do with our custom bots is eliminate any mundane things that your agents are spending time doing. And we're, try we're doing that in a seamless way where you, where you can hand out a bot to an agent, an agent back to a bot, and so on and so forth. Alrighty. So on the left-hand side of my screen, we, can ha we have this help shift online store. And then on the right-hand side of my screen, this is the help shift dashboard for those of you that aren't familiar. So I'm gonna go um, here, and this is our web chat widget that's been dropped onto this page. Um, and I'm gonna start a conversation. Um, so it says, hi, how can we help you? I'm gonna say, hi there, do you have any coupons today? I'm gonna push send. Now the first thing that's happened here is AnswerBot ran. AnswerBot looked at what I said and it looked in the pre-existing knowledge base that lives in this environment and is showing me relevant FAQ articles about coupons or discounts. So it's showing me, it can show up to three, but we're showing only two right now because there's only two relevant. And notice that AnswerBot is still in the same UI. I'm not being taken out to another page or another area. It's still happening inside the conversation. All right, so if I was to say, yes, this helped, then no issue would actually be generated in help shift. But I still wanna to talk to someone. So I'm gonna say, no, I still need to talk to an agent. And now we can see on the other side of the screen here, that an issue was created in help shift. First, let's take a look at this. It says, hi, thank you for contacting us about promos. A specialist will be with you right away. And on this side, Hi there, do you have any coupons for today? Let's look right here. AI predicted this issue as promo. So that's what predict is doing. So I have already fed this dashboard a lot of issues about promotion. And so what the or what predict did, the model did, is it tagged this issue with a promo label. Then what I was able to do with that, I assigned it to a cart queue um, so it assigned to the right agent and it sent this automated reply about a promo. So I could have added a bot, I could have sent it to a specific group of agents, added more tags, all kinds of things. Um, now let's go ahead, let's, this conversation has ended. I've helped this customer uh, find the coupon they were looking for. Let's go ahead and resolve this. 
and let's show CSAT bot here. So CSAT bot, we see very high completion rates in this because it's happening in real time at resolution. It's not a follow-up email or a follow-up message coming later. Um, so how would you rate this chat experience? One to five stars and free text here. Great support. All right. So now, um, so that's how predict works. Now I'm going to quickly show um, a demo that I've set up with um, a issue selection bot. So you can see here, um, this is a mobile app. Now HubShift works on web and mobile, so this is just showing you a mobile experience. It looks exactly the same as the web experience. So I'm going to press on help. Welcome to Shopper Support. How can we help you today? So now we can see here um, this has a predefined set of issue types that I can select. So is it my order, exchange, refund, or others? And this is all happening in this conversational UI. No more forms that the customers clicking drop downs and it's dynamic and they have a ton of things to fill out. This is keeping them in the UI and in the conversation. So I'm having a return issue. And based on that, um, that I selected, now, okay, what, why are you returning this order? So this is dynamic. So I can say, um, this was damaged in delivery. Now, because I selected damage in delivery, that's a kind of issue that I need to talk to an agent. So now it got escalated and automatically assigned to Nick, the agent here. And he said, can you please send me a picture that shows the damage? Um, I mean, I can't, I'm at work, but I'll send it once I get home. So because this is on mobile and I'm inside a mobile app, I can come back and have an asynchronous conversation with the agent. But once I get home, I will want to send, sorry, once I get home, I want to send an image of the damaged dress. Um, and now, thank you, we're shipping over a replacement. And there we go, this is how CSAT works on the mobile experience as well. All right, so that is how AnswerBot works, how our issue selection bot is working today, how Predict is encompassing. Um, if you have any questions or would like to see a customized demo um, with custom bots, please feel free to reach out and we can set that up. All right, so this is gonna be a wrap. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in. Remember, we are, you can sign up for a demo, you can request for more details, and also, uh, we're gonna send you the ebook that has a lot of good information, and if you have any questions on that, feel free to reach back out to us. And then, uh, visit the HelpShift blog. It's got lots of good information that our team keeps on adding uh, around AI, around bots, and around customer service in general. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.